Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our coaching uh, webinar today. Um, hopefully you're all in the right place. Um, so just to remind you today, we're going to be talking about embedding a coaching culture. Why coaching? Why now? And how to make it stick. Um, my name is Paula Gibson. I'm from City and Gills, and I'm delighted to have you all along listening in today. Um, just a couple of um, housekeeping rules. The session is being recorded. You'll all, all get a copy of the, um, of the recording after the session. If you could maybe just put yourselves on mute um, so you can listen to the speakers that I'm about to introduce in a second. Um, any questions, there is a chat function um, for you to actually put in a question. Um, so please so please do, and we'll kind of look at those as we go along. Um, and um, and I think and I think that's all and I think that's all I needed to to say with regards to housekeeping. Um, so listen, um, I, I just firstly want to kind of really welcome a fabulous panel of employers that I've got um, lined up for you all today, um, which I'm going to in, in, introduce in a second, um, and then I'll sort of take you through the agenda. Um, so let me just do that now. Um, so obviously. Um, my name is Paula Gibson. I've been kind of tasked with pulling this webinar together. We run our City and Girls and ILM. We run these webinars fairly frequently. And um, there's quite a few of you who've joined today who I can see actually who are regular attendees of our webinars. So hopefully you'll enjoy today's session. Um, and today's session is all about coaching and mentoring and how to embed a coaching culture. Um, so we're first going to hear from our keynote speakers, River Island and Barclays. Um, and then we're going to hear from um, Susanna from Zenonex, who's going to be talking to you specifically um, about coaching and mentoring within her organisation. And then we're due to finish um, round about at 12 o'clock. So we've got a packed a packed agenda. So I ain't going to take a lot of time uh, speaking up. But yeah, I, I'm really keen to, in, to introduce my speakers. Um, so... First up, we've got um, Sama. Let me tell you a little bit about Sama. So Sama's passion is seeing people develop, succeed and be their best at all levels, uh, which is why she does what she does. Um, understanding what motivates us and the psychology of why we do runs through her career experience and working with leaders and employees. Sama has got extensive experience in different industries from telecommunications, retail to hospitality and fashion. Um, and she spent over 15 years of her career being the people uh, being in the people team under the umbrella of learning and development from a coaching to talent develop succession planning and capability and supporting competency and bedding a learning culture. Wow, we really can't wait to hear from you, Sarah. Really excited. Um, I'm also delighted uh, to introduce Darren. Um, so Darren is Weissel, is head of coaching at Barclays. Um, he is an experienced and qualified leader and coach and coach supervisor. He currently leads a team of full-time internal coaches with Barclays UK. Prior to joining Barclays in 2015, he was the head of coaching for teaching leaders and um, an educational charity, um, the lead coach for Babcock International, where he played a key role in supporting the Navy in delivering their coaching strategy before he served for 23 years as a Royal Marine Commando, wow, where he was instrumental in developing the coaching strategy at the Commando Training Centre. Um, outside of work, his main interests are his family, and spending time in the great outdoors. Wow, we can't wait to listen to you, Darren. Thank you. And then last but not least, um, Susanna, who's a good friend of mine, um, is the managing director and founder of Zenonex. Prior to setting up Zenonex, Susanna was a senior business coach for KPMG. Um, Susanna was coached extensively at board, senior executive and middle leadership level, both in the public and private sector. And for over 15 years, she's been doing coaching both formally and informally. Susanna is, a, uh, is currently coaching exec and senior managers in several large scale assignments and leads on the development and the delivery of the ILM postgraduate for executive coaches and Zenonex's work has also been recognised in the National ILM Hall of Fame. Uh, Susanna, a co-founder of the Coaching Network, which you'll hear more about today, an organisational membership network for internal coaches, um, and Susanna hosts uh, conferences and events for um, NCN members um, and her current clients uh, that she works with, which I'm sure you'll hear more about, include the likes of Vodafone, um, Leeds City College, um, NHS and Sky Betting and Gaming. <laughs> so great to have you all along. Uh, there's a lot to get through there. So thanks for bearing with me. Um, so if we just go back to um, the agenda, we first uh, uh, up, we have Sama. Um, so I'm just going to go, uh, sorry, I do beg your pardon. It's Darren first up. I do beg, beg your pardon. So, Darren, over to you. 
No, thank you very much, Paula, and thanks for the, the introduction. Um, <laughs> the first thing I say, I need to get somebody to do a professional photograph. I, I look like the person that stands out in a line out of the police and wants those brilliant photographs that, that everybody else has got. Um, I'm joining you today from my home in Chester, uh, which in the world of hybrid working is, is generally my sort of office these days. Uh, and I'm, hopefully I'm here to share with you some useful insights around how we're aiming to build a better bank of Barclays um, through our internal coaching capability. Now, Paula introduced you to who I am and a little bit about my background. So I'm not going to say too much more about that. But if you wouldn't mind just flicking on um, the slides there, Paula, it'd be really appreciated. My aim in this sort of session is to tell you a little bit about um, my sort of team, uh, what we do, how we do it. Uh, and hopefully at the end of the session, as, as Paul has already alluded to, there'll be some opportunity uh, for sharing questions, insights, learning uh, from each other. Um, it says passion led me and genuinely passion led me. It wasn't an offer of uh, chocolate knobs from Susanna or from Paula to, to speak here today. I'm passionate about creating environments where people can thrive irrespective of circumstance. And, as Paula alluded to, I've, I've got quite an eclectic background. Formative, my formative years started as a Royal Marine Commando. I left school with a black eye and a blazer and no qualifications, uh, but a bit of self-belief that was supported by a wonderful sort of network of colleagues within the military services it, it, that enabled me to, to flourish in that environment. And I became one of the first of three specialist coaches in the Royal Marines that was aimed at trying to transform the training and education environment which Royal Marines um, conducted their training at the Commando Training Centre by using coaching as a vehicle for success. Uh, it, the product of the, that learning experience for me was an opportunity to leave the Royal Marines at the end of my career and move into working with the Royal Navy as a consultant for Babcock International where I supported the Royal Navy's agenda to introduce coaching across the naval service, primarily within the training establishments. Um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about culture. I learned a lot about how do you promote coaching in what is traditionally expected to be a transactional environment. And I've applied that learning, not only within the military sort of sector, but ever since then in education and more recently in the financial services. And it's been a huge learn and not all of it's been easy but I think through tenacity, resilience or grit, however you would describe it, I think I am where I am today and my, my team exists within our current environment because of having a mindset to create that environment where people can thrive. And hopefully I'll share a little bit about that with you all today. Um, we're going to cover a few things. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my team. I'll tell you a little bit about our coaching strategy. I'll tell you something about our solutions uh, and how we measure our impact. And I'll share some of the stories about our impact with you as well. And the, the big one for me is about how do we raise our standards as an internal coaching community uh, that exists within the business? Because I think that is the bit that makes the difference. Um, there are a number of things, but, but that's where we're at. But let, let's move on and talk a little bit about why internal coaching. Um, and why it's essential. Well, I don't know what this image conjures up for you, but for me, it's representative of the world in which we live in today. It's, it's prickly. I don't know about you during COVID. The world felt very prickly for me in COVID. I know as a coaching team hitting the ground, listening as you would expect um, within a business, the world for our colleagues felt prickly as well. And, and as human beings, we're a little bit like the balloon. We're a little bit sensitive. And, and for me, coaching is a key enabler to stabilize uh, what is coined um, in our sort of world, and it may be in yours as well, a VUCA world. Um, the VUCA stands for, if you've not heard of it, it stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And for my mind, it's coaching that gives a business its competitive edge. It's about unlocking potential. It's about accelerating positive and productive behaviors. It's about shifting mindsets, letting go of some of the old ways of thinking and embracing new ways of thinking. Um, the research supports this. 
we know that um, through embedding co coaching, not just within our organizations, but through multiple organizations, and I dare say if it exists in your own organization today, you've seen a shift in not only sort of mindsets, but behaviors. And importantly as well, the results that businesses get as well, because it should be founded in results. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a while. So for me, internal coaching gives businesses its competitive, competitive edge. It deliver, delivers positive behaviors um, in an abundance. People feel that they can achieve more. They have more of a can-do attitude. They develop resilience, not the ability just to bounce back to the original place that they were before the adversity happened, but bounce forward in spite of the adversity. So let's, let's move on and I'll share a little bit about my, my team. I think you'll say VUCA in a moment. Um, I'll say a little bit more about VUCA. If you're not familiar with it, there is an antidote to VUCA. Um, in a volatile world, we need vision. Uh, they say without vision, the people are lost. I think that's absolutely true. Coaching enables leaders to tell better stories. In an uncertain world, we need understanding. Understanding is more than just empathy as we know it. The empathy is often described as our ability to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes. I'm going to extend that to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, but keep your socks on. It enables you to maintain a level of objectivity. And it also prevents fungal infections because you won't want to put your feet in my shoes for sure. Um, in a complex world, it enables us to have courage to make decisions and coaching is all about enabling people to make courageous decisions about themselves, their career, their lives and the way they live. In an ambiguous world as well, what we need more than anything else is, is agility, mental agility, physical agility, strategic agility, and coaching unlocks that as well. But let's move on into um, my team. I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of my team. Um, I've got a team of six, who work for me, but there's not only one full-time team within Barclays. I think we're pretty unique. We're quite a big, complex business, and I've been here for eight years, and I'm still trying to get my head around it. But there are three teams within Barclays. When I was employed at Barclays eight years ago, I thought I was the only coach. And then I, I took a turn left in the business and stumbled on a team of coaches that were full-time dedicated to supporting our leads within business banking. Um, and then I look right, and there was another small team of full-time internal coaches in our business. Now, we work all in independently within our business areas, but interdependently to deliver some strategic aims. Collectively, I would say the three teams with Barclays are purpose-driven. The purpose-driven of internal coaches, it says on the screen, to unlock learning, grow leadership, and deliver measurable, sustainable results. Uh, my team has three key strategic aims. More leaders have access to coaching. Not just leaders, though, all colleagues. Not my personal view is everybody's a leader. You just might not know it yet. You don't need a title to be a leader. It's about how you be. So we're aiming to democratise coaching across Barclays. Um, we're also enabling coaching to develop as the predominant style of leaders, leadership. Now, we don't deliver coaching programmes. I'll say a little bit more about this while well. we enable... Um, leaders to think about how they're embedding coaching as part of their leadership repertoire into their daily lives and work. And our final strategic aim as an internal coaching team is to strike, strengthen the, the sort of diverse talent pool that we have through inclusive succession planning. So there are three strategic aims. I genuinely, as I said, I'm incredibly proud of our team. We've got a, a qualified and experienced team from multiple sectors some are homegrown, some have been hired externally. And one of our strategic aims, we don't always communicate this, is to make our external partners irrelevant. Susanna, apologies. <laughs> we want people to come to us first. <laughs> it's our strategic sort of aim. That, that's my sort of vision for the future as well. Um, every one of our team engages in uh, supervision and their own professional development. And we adhere to the highest sort of professional standards. Um, the, A the Association for Coaching, the ICF, the EMCC, the European Mentoring Coaching Council, are all key enablers of, of our work. And we've got members of our teams who uh, are volunteers for the EMCC, volunteers for the Association for Coaching, engage with the ICF, and also with our wonderful sort of colleagues within Zen and X, 
uh, because it's a wonderful community of internal coaches where it enables us to think about how do we maintain our game? How do we share our learning with other people? Um, so that's a little bit about us. Um, I'll move on and just share a few more sort of insights. And, and, I, and I'm more than happy at this stage just to pause for a moment, just in case there are any questions. But our sort of strategy is based upon three pillars. Um, we designed this strategy, and I say we, because it's a collaborative effort in terms of how we think about our coaching. That our coaching is structured. Um, it's structured because we want to provide a consistent service. So my colleagues within business banking will pretty much operate in the same way that my team operates. My colleagues in the other business area will operate in the same way I operate. So if leaders move around the different businesses, they get pretty much the same experience. They'll go, oh, what does coaching mean for you within your business area? We've got a clear definition of what coaching is, and we've got a clear understanding about what's the process. Whilst we all offer our own unique way of coaching, I don't prescribe that coaches must do X, Y, and Z, but all coaching's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. What happens in the beginning and the middle end may be dependent on the coach, but also on the client's experience as well. Um, we also make sure that the right people, the right skills, support the right sort of colleagues as well. So we triage our coaching. Um, we're responsive. I mentioned that we hit the ground listening when we, we had the outbreak of COVID. We weren't physically able to hit the ground listening, but we listened to our clients. What stories were they telling us? And what could we do to support them? So one of the things that we did, we, we did like a weekly sort of podcast, but we also did a weekly broadcast on a variety of topics to help people move forward in a productive way. Um, we also um, deliver an e-newsletter called From Inside the Mind of Your Coach. From Inside the Mind of Your Coach pulls together key themes that we're hearing from the ground and we share that back with our colleagues through storytelling, sharing nudges about leadership sort of philosophies or things that they can get the teeth into to really make a difference. Um, and our final part of our strategy is that we're aligned. Um, whilst, and this is an interesting one, we grew out of a passion from one of our managing directors over 10 years ago to experience coaching. And he went, why can't all leaders have access to coaching? Um, and basically it was cost, cost economy. So he created a pool of coaches within his own business area. Then a different, my business area went, we want what they've got. So we grew from that. We weren't aligned to the corporate strategy. We weren't, didn't have exco sponsorship, but we existed. Um, in an ideal world, we'd have sponsorship from the top straight away. So we've had to navigate that water. But what we've done is make sure everything that we do is aligned to our business strategy. So we're about building a better bank. So how does our work support in building a better bank? What story are we going to tell? So our stakeholders understand why we exist and what we can deliver, whether that's tangibly or intangibly. Um, and we'll move on from that. That's a, I, I don't think there's much more to say about the three pillars, but they are what they are. Um, I'm going to share with you three solutions. We offer three solutions primarily. There are more, but these are our key focuses. We existed originally to provide one-to-one -one executive coaching for our senior leaderships, our managing directors and our directors predominantly. Today, um, we provide coaching to our managing directors, our directors, our VP emerging talent, our AVPs, and we also offer a booking tool to anybody who feels that they need to work with a coach, even if it's just for one 45-minute solution-focused coaching session, can access to our service. Um, because we think we should democratise coaching, get rid of the privilege just having access to it. Why shouldn't all people benefit from coaching as a service? Um, we also offer team and group coaching, recognising that changing the leader or working with the leader on their own transformational journey is not going to be sufficient enough to really have an impact on the business in the way that you want. So we work with the system that the leader is part of. Or we work with pods um, in the Agile so we're helping leaders engage across boundaries with each other to learn from those diverse experiences that exist within the business, to dissolve those business in silos. 
And the final big one that we put, and this is linked to Barclays strategic narrative, when a new initiative lands from HR or from learning or from um, Exco around Barclays transformational journey, what we provide is large scale, solution focused, dialogue based sort of sessions, but it interacts with large numbers of people around how are you making sense of allyship? How are you making sense of situational leadership? How are you making sense of empowerment? So we get to hear the voice of leaders en masse, and that enables us to target interventions to business areas that need it most, whether that's coaching or whether it's training or whether it's some other solution. So we get to hear that live. There are other things that we do um, because we're just passionate about helping people. So wherever we can, we have an impact. We're currently prototyping a concept of, of coaching where we're using data to provide frontline leaders with coaching prompts, digital coaching prompts that enable and work with our colleagues. Um, it's not the human interaction that, that with us that happens, it's the technology that provides the interaction. The coaching team are working in the background to provide these sort of prompts of that. So we're testing and experimenting with stuff as well. So they're three of our core solutions. I'll move on and I'll apologize um, for being fast, but I'm mindful that I don't want to occupy all the airtime. I think measuring impact of coaching is absolutely essential. When I first got into coaching, I was sent to the CIPD and I did a postgraduate certificate in the psychology of coaching and evaluation of coaching. <laughs> and I think I walked away just scratching my head, going, I'm none the wiser now in terms of how to evaluate the work that I do other than um, just happy sheets. Uh, but over the years, I've really thought about strategic, how do we demonstrate and measure our impact? Um, we look as an organization, at not just looking at the inputs such as the coaching relationship, the coach's capabilities and the process they use. We look at the outputs of coaching. So leaders will tell us about the new insights that they've got. We do video, we get leaders to do video recordings for us. And sometimes we include those in the, with their permission from inside the mind of the coach. Or we'll have a podcast with leaders who want to promote the service and the impact of the service we have. Um, so we look at learning, we look at behavior, but then we look at the outcomes. How is this making a real shift um, in the measurable outcomes in the business? So if a leader tells us that my meetings are much more effective as a product of our work um, as, as coach versus client, you go, if you were to estimate, for example, a cost saving on the, the productivity around meetings, what might that be? It is only ever going to be an estimate, but it enables us to tell a story about how we're reducing the cost to serve and creating value. And it says on the right hand side, the value creation. I mean, I, I, I took away the narrative around here and just stuck an image, which is representative of where we're trying to create value um, with in help, enabling that building a better bank. So looking at our purpose, looking at our values, looking at our mindset, how is that making a difference and a shift, um, not only within our core client population, but systemically with our customers and our business clients, for example. And I think we can move on from there. I mean, the, the NPS, we do a basic NPS in terms of measuring the inputs. I mean, we're on average around 98 for our NPS, which is blinking high. I'm like, the, the coaches for me is like, hats off, They're an amazing job. Um, but how do we raise our standards? I've already mentioned the three sort of um, coaching bodies, um, predominantly the European Mentoring Coaching Council Association, where we do most of our work. One, because they've got a glo core global code of ethics, um, rather than subscribing to two, whilst the ICFs are brilliant, without a shadow of a doubt, that's where we're invested in our time at the moment. Um, the coaches are so active in the Association for Coaching, and I've been with the EMCC. Um, you, you can't help but learn from being with those, those um, professional bodies. Xenonex as well. I mean, I, I'd heard of Xenonex through one of my team, and I was running a session for or running a, a program of learning for the EMCC, a voluntary piece around internal coaching. I, I shut down the EMC. When I went, 
there's one here that exists that has got a great network. Why, why compete when you can actually collaborate and just join, join one? So ZeniNex has been really helpful for us. The final one, this, this is for me, absolutely essential. It's been, a, I'd say it's been a battle, not the kind of battle I had when I was in the military, but I've had to get in the trenches and roll my sleeves up, get a little bit dirty to get supervision off the ground. Coaches need supervision. You need to protect the well-being. You need to promote organizational learning. You need to continue to make sure that they're protecting their clients in the most ethical way as well. Um, business as who invest in internal coaching, you need to get supervision in there from the off. I've just spent a year um, getting two people signed off within my team on a new supervision program, just so we've got people in as a succession pipeline. I think that there's going to be a real shift in leadership development within businesses in the future, where the internal coaching faculty all become more or less the supervisors. You don't have to call them supervisors, call them something else, but they support the leader as coach journey. That's the bit that, that I think needs the biggest amount of investment. And I'm, I'm going to pause for a breath there because I think I've hit my deadline. Thanks, Darren. Um, that was really, really insightful. Um, there's not too many questions coming in the chat. So what I'm going to suggest is we just kind of move on to summer, if that's OK. And we hear from a very different type of organisation, which obviously is 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 River Island. So uh, over, over to you, Summer. Thank you so much. Um, Darren, you've, uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and keep the flow absolutely the same, but uh, thank you all so much. So I really wanted to share with you in a quite a different aspect is the River Island approach, especially when it comes to our coaching culture, um, how we're embedding it. So my role really is to support our leaders across the whole business from first time managers to our directors, executive board members, um, to really look at capability and competencies. But the thread that really undermines all of that is the, the concept of coaching. And it's a very different type of business. It's a creative business. The culture is very vibrant, very young, very fresh, fun. And creativity is absolutely the core of our business. Um, so it's probably best to say anything in terms of traditional or very corporate doesn't always stick because of how quickly, as you all know, um, fashion and, and buying behaviors and so on has evolved dramatically. Um, but really looking at it much more internally, coaching not only is it my own passion itself, I knew at the age of 16 I wanted to do psychology and understand what drives us to do what we wanted to do. And I've really kind of been the mass, the biggest advocate of coaching. And I really have brought that across over to, to River Island with all of the team to, to help us to realize what is it that makes us great? How do we navigate change and complexity? How do we be our best? Because that's really what we're all about. And I wanted to share with you in terms of some key initiatives that we've done here on the island, as we call ourselves, and how we've managed to really keep that mindset going to really enable us to all be great at what we do. Um, why now? Why has coaching become such a main theme? Where it really kind of stems back to our uh, the start of the, the brand story, really. And that is not much to, um, to, to know in terms of where we've come from. So we started out the business, it's a family owned business. Um, and we started out in 1948 where Mr. Bernard Lewis really started his hand at running a business, believe it or not, by selling fruit and vegetables to the people of London. Um, but actually, we've evolved from that. He's moved on to selling uh, walls and knitting and that's where Lewis separates really came into and the fashion concept really evolved from there. From the early 90s for those of us who uh, remember it being on the high street we grew and then we emerged from Chelsea Girl to Concept Man and that's really where we became known as River Island but our um, brand is fresh it's exciting and it's always forward looking and that's where we've always been. It's about fostering that mindset for us to navigate change, evolution of it in over decades, but really putting the people at the center of everything that we do. We're always on an exciting journey. It's embedded in an absolutely really strong family culture. We always wanna be sort of the front stage of it all. We are the biggest in-house design team. 
um, on the British High Street, and we have a real deep commitment to nurture our talent um, to be one of the most successful fashion retailers here for us in the UK. So we love what we do. We, we do have a passion for fashion, <laughs> but really our uh, retail is the lifeblood of our business. Um, and really to keep it going, we work to our own pace. We keep an eye on the competition, but we're not reactive. We're very proactive by actually writing our own rules. And we then had a new CEO, Will Kernan, join us in 2019, which was the first non-family member to be in that position. And this is where we started to see our culture really shift and change, because with it came about the real focus of developing our people. We are a very large organization, um, and we want to grow sustainably. We have big commitments, not just internally, but of course externally, and allowing our people to really have a sense of purpose. So this is where our brand culture and values really comes into play. So um, on the next slide there, uh, <laughs> Paula. So throughout our history, we've always challenged ourselves to improve. Um, we know that we can do better and uh, we know that with it along comes the fashion piece. Since the pandemic, I think we've all known this and we all say it continuously. We're navigating not only just uncertain times, but also our teams today are very different from the teams of the past. We're diverse, um, dispersed, digital, and dynamic. So all these changes can really make people feel sometimes quite isolated. It can disrupt the flow of communication, even within our own teams. There's now much more pressure on managers and leaders having to be um, on the go all the time. And on top of that, we're also equally worried about what's happening around us. Um, we have the desire to change, but at the same time, we have the demands and constraints of sort of the everyday life. So although it's our vision internally to make fashion make sense and joy, whilst absolutely making a real difference in the world that we live, people and the planet is absolutely core in everything we do. So our culture and values allows us to be authentic, but to be able to do that and cover that, that's where coaching has been an absolute um, saviour and foundation to everything we do. To be diverse and inclusive, we have to get to know everybody on, on some level. We have to understand how we all part, play a part. We have to get involved. How do we create accountability? How do we act with integrity and purpose? And of course, how do we drive the results? So although we're forever striving in our business, making it more flexible, simpler, better, faster, fitter, innovation is one of our core values and we have to keep it real. So how do we collaborate with each other at every step of the way? Um, how do we make it a fun place to work? And this is where the fostering of the mindset really comes in. So through the coaching um, initiatives, understanding, really questioning it, making it a sustained workplace for our people to be their best. Um, we have such a young workforce in our business today and the demands of what they're looking for isn't necessarily the most complicated tool we need to implement. It's simply about the human skills, as we call it. So really, the coaching approach allows our leaders to sometimes pause in such a chaotic world, in a chaotic moment, to just be able to understand and process and take a little bit of a step back. Through that, they can ask the right questions. Through that, they can navigate the change with such fluidity and, and potentially build on that confidence. Um, we have different coaching initiatives that we've developed. We have a psychometric development tool as well. We don't do things on a very formal basis. Everything is a way of being. We are a very informal relationship-based culture and business, and therefore behavior breeds behavior. We take time to really explore and allow someone to be their best and enable that in a more simpler way to be creative, to foster the innovation that we, we absolutely need to succeed in this world and have a really lasting impact on people at every level. What's great is we're not a hierarchical business at all. We look at what is the right thing to do. That's what we always ask ourselves. And through the questioning, through the mindset, we have so many different teams. We have values and culture champions. Um, well, being, of course, being an absolute key factor of it, this is where everything comes back to the concept of coaching. It's woven into our business. And because of that, we've seen great improvements in our performance. We've seen great improvements in the collaboration because that's a massive part of the way that we work. And of course, the output that we produce, that's kind of the impact that we're, we're having and we're looking at. 
some of the initiatives that we've seen is about how do we make our people make a difference and how do we embed that coaching culture? So we started to really focus on not just individuals at every level, but also most importantly, the ones who have the highest level of influence, which is our leaders and our managers. But the demand on their, on their level is huge and the expectations are only growing. But sometimes that can be really difficult to manage. I don't think it's said enough that being a leader and a manager in today's world is quite a difficult job. It's a challenging job. Um, it seems easy in principle, but when you have a team of 20, 30, from our retail teams to our product teams, to our merchandising teams, to even our support functions, it can seem really, really overwhelming. So what are some of the initiatives we've really um, embedded and fostered and encouraged? And we still have a journey to go. So this is the foundations we're creating to allow our leaders to be better coaches, to build stronger teams, and the style of leaders that we've also had the privilege of really joining our business has meant that flexibility, um, a quick turnaround, and really open to new ways of doing things supports leaders fit for now and for the future. So what is the understanding of our coaching culture here on, on the island? It's about looking at your existing strengths. It's, of course, we know it's a process, it's a journey of self-discovery not just in our leaders themselves to understand their preferences and their styles, but actually that of their team. We're looking at everybody on a different levels, but identifying, exploring, overcoming barriers that are potentially holding them back, any type of limiting beliefs, anything that will really enable them to achieve their full potential. And we've found through some of these initi initiatives that coaching is really, really powerful for us here on the island. It creates a positive impact, people feel better, they feel like they're much more in control. It builds on their resiliency. Uh, it builds on their confidence. And absolutely, we see that in their work performance. When our managers receive coaching, whether that's informally or formally, they absolutely carry through that mindset with the rest of their teams and other stakeholders that they potentially interact. So we've seen a benefit in that. We've seen a huge uptake in our mentorship program at all levels. We really look at leadership programs fit for purpose. And that's where the difference is. We don't just take things maybe um, off the shelf. It's not a traditional way of managing, um, especially in a creative space. And actually part of our leadership program to, to really get to the level that we're at today, creating the foundation of what good looks like, we used a lot of focus groups, a lot of input from all our leaders and managers and employees across the board to have a voice in shaping that program. And really what underlines it all is absolutely that um, coaching piece. We have to deliver our results in a fast-paced environment. We're dealing with rapid change. Sometimes we're working with reduced cost budgets, but our workload seems to be really, really increasing. So in, in short, we have to do so much more, but with less um, tools potentially. So our leaders are under so much more pressure to deliver. And because of that, Generally, the, the behavior is we become less focused on, on teams or individuals. We become more focused on, on you know, keeping our head above the sand, as we say. And that's where you get a little bit more directive, a lot more telling, much more goal focused. Have we done it now? And it leaves less room for listening. But also one of our biggest um, challenge and something that we've always worked on through Workplace Coaches Program is actually getting through that mindset piece of seeing coaching as something that doesn't produce fast results. Um, or it could be seen as, quote, fluffy sometimes. But actually it's getting our leaders to understand to move towards empathetic leaders, which is absolutely what's needed in our business for today and the future, then really support well-being because that's really the core um, of our agile leadership behaviors and the teams, that's what they're asking us for. And that takes time to step back, to observe, to listen, to ask the right questions. And in return, our leaders understand their purpose in that team. A leader and a manager's role really is to foster an environment for people to be their best. It's not to always have the right answers. And we have to recognize sometimes how do we show up on a good day? How do we show up on a bad day? Because that's going to happen, not just as me as a leader, for example, but certainly for those in our teams. And we have to recognize those differences and potentially look at what practical steps can we adapt? How do we connect much more better? Um, and how do we allow somebody to maybe see the world as we do and vice versa? 
So on some of these initiatives, we've got the Workplace Coaches Programme, which is completely voluntary. So here we work with the ILM team and, uh, and really create a bit of an accreditation for that. It took up a huge um, uptake in our business and year on year we continue to really grow our workplace coaches. And we've been doing this, I believe, for about the last couple of years. And we have islanders, as we call them, so employees at all different levels, really volunteering their time to be workplace coaches. And that's part and the heart of why we do what we do. We want River Island to be a brilliant place to work. And through the workplace coaches, it's um, through our, I guess, history and tradition of, of giving our time to enable others to be their best and inspire every islander to be a better version of themselves, to allow us to improve our skills, to allow us to perform better with confidence and understand that it's okay to make mistakes. There is no negative consequence. There's just opportunities to learn. Our mentor program is our islanders are absolutely passionate about supporting one another. It's a hugely relationship-based business. We really go out of our way to share experiences with each other, share our knowledge. And one of the platforms we've seen a massive uptake with is implementing a mentorship program. Again, volunteers, we've got um, individuals across the, the business who are mentors and there are different aspects of mentors as well. So not just about developing skills in our business, but encouraging networking opportunities. It helps us to build great relationships across a really big organization where you don't always see everybody. There is different types of mental profiles that we have that individuals can actually choose from. And we've seen a massive uptake on that, especially from our much more younger generational workforce. Because here experience and learning from each other um, really encourages and supports a developmental growth mindset, which is another way of really bringing it back to the heart of coaching. Our Emerging Leadership Programme, we recognise people have aspirations around their career development or people that are currently in those positions that maybe haven't really had formal opportunities or education of how to be their best in a leadership position because it's evolved so much. And so this is about um, creating quite a transparent pathway, a developmental pathway, for people to come in as a first-time manager, if I'm in this role, well, then what does it look like? What are the expectations? To such a director level of what good looks like there. And it's all behavioral, but again, always linked back to the coaching concepts. And of course, our developmental management pathways, a modular approach. Here, it's about creating foundations. We have aspiring managers. We have individuals who just want to develop and grow their own skill set and capability. And with that, we give them a modular approach, a bit of educational with also follow up or practical examples that really works for us in a very informal, creative space. So our islanders need to be their best. Um, we've revamped some traditional platforms that we have in our, in our business, appraisal performance processes. We're still going through a transformational change in terms of our performance management approach. But actually, we've really moved that towards much more of a coaching style and support and feedback. And the principle behind that change is that people can actually have much more meaningful conversations between your manager and, and the individual. And it should be happening all the time. It shouldn't be seen as I've got to book a meeting and therefore that's when we can do coaching. But actually, really lived and breathed every day on the island. Through this coaching process, it's absolutely allowed our islanders to develop and um, the ability to really manage and deal with complex situations that they could find challenging. It, inc um, it increases, sorry, <laughs> um, self-awareness about how I think, feel, and behave. And most importantly, coaching has enabled our leaders to be much more visible. As I said before, it's not a hierarchical business and everybody is actually empowered to contribute which is why we get lots and lots of ideas and really great collaborative conversations. But sometimes it's through the right questioning, it's that solution-based thinking, enabling someone to come to that solution, finding a sense of purpose, contributing, making a difference. That's how we're finding that we're adding much more value. Confidence, we're start, starting to see really increasing. Morale and motivation, well-being, of course, and you see a huge amount of team contribution. We're fostering engaging managers across the island. 
that way they can focus on their people and their teams and give them much more scope to be innovative contribute much more but it allows everybody to really be treated as an individual and build on those individual relationships most importantly for us it opens up that dialogue to be coached and stretched to really unlock their potential so as a result, um, we've moved on from just a company-based action to doing much more about individual managers and leaders. Um, but above all, it's evidence-based changing because we started with the mindset. We started there at the core of why we do what we do. Where are the benefits? Not just the traditional way of coaching, but it's about how can we be creative with asking the right questions in the right way and at the right time. Um, what's important for us is our business is a very entrepreneurial business. We have decades of our success and we continue to do so. So we're always asking, and there's always an expectation of what's the right thing to do. Although we work in a creative space, it is challenging and can be challenging. But coaching has absolutely enabled us to understand intentions, confidently speak up about how we can move forward and maybe what changes we can propose. So in summary, coaching is a big part of our culture. We still have a, a journey to go but we've made some great wins and some great foundations. Um, essentially, our culture and values comes down to a few key words. We're one team. We are absolutely the difference. We are the islanders. And most importantly, this is what makes River Island what it is. Thank you. Thanks, Sama. That was really interesting. And what I loved about actually both Darren and, and, and your uh, in, input, some very different coaching styles, but obviously very complementary as well. Um, so uh, really, really insightful. Um, so you do have a few more slides there. So I, I, I don't know whether you wanted to kind of finish off with anything or, or, or are you happy for us to kind of move on? Is that all right? No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This was this slide here was about where we're moving more towards in terms of really making it yeah. better in the future. So, yeah. Definitely. You. Definitely. Um, I'm just looking through the chat now and of, of you know, of, some you know some fantastic feedback down from your presentation uh it's really really insightful really interesting um so we're getting some really really nice comments coming through um and um somebody's actually commented uh, lucy actually how they, they love the personalized approach uh to 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 river island um again you know really inspiring uh i mean everyone can see the comments there so do so do take a look so let's let's kind of move on then because i am conscious of time um so um, I am going to now introduce Suzanne uh, to talk about Zenonex and the coaching culture health check. So over to you, Susanna. Thank you very much. And thank you, Sama. That's really made me want to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I'll thank you, you for that later. I'll thank you for that later. Lovely. Thank you, um, everybody. Really interesting to hear both of those presentations. And um, as an organisation, what I'm going to be talking to you about just briefly today, I'm going to try and do this in about five or six minutes to leave a little bit of time to do a bit of Q&A, is about our embedding a coaching culture health check tool and app that we have developed within ZNX. And just a little bit about us. We are based in Harrogate in North Yorkshire. We're on the Yorkshire Agricultural Showground. I look at beautiful um, fields and sheep and everything from, from our office window here every day, which is wonderful. So if anyone's local and wants to come and visit us, please do. Um, I'm the managing director. We specialize in developing and embedding coaching cultures. And we have done with clients for about 20 years now prior to Setting up Zenonex, I was an internal lead coach for KPMG, so coached internally. So I've been an internal coach for a number of years, and I've also been an external coach. So I've seen both sides uh, of the fence. Uh, we offer a one-stop shop in terms of coaching services, right from strategy all the way through to leader as coach, day-to-day -day coaching conversations programs. And we're also an ILM accredited center. So we offer ILM three, five and seven um, in, in coach accreditation. As Darren mentioned, thank you, Darren. We set up the internal coach network back in 2018. This is a membership network for internal coaches within organizations, whether you are a full time coach like Darren has with his team or whether you're coaching off the side of your desk. 
which is what I think much more common within organizations today. And so if you are one of those, you've gone through some accreditation, you're thinking about accreditation, and you want to access a membership network that can provide ongoing CPD and supervision for you, Darren mentioned how important supervision is, please do contact me at Zenonex and we can send information about ICN. Um, we've never seen so much interest in uh, organisations that we're working with currently about developing and embedding a coaching culture. And why is that? Well, for, for me, this is about what COVID, what COVID has really brought about. And those organisations that we've been working with, those organisations that struggled the most were the ones that hadn't spent the time thinking about their people strategy and the culture and how we can empower our people. Um, more than others. And it was those in those organizations that really felt they didn't have that discretionary effort when it came to the time of critical crisis through COVID. The people just weren't engaged enough. We hadn't invested, perhaps we'd invested in their technical skills, but we'd not invested in their softer skills. And so therefore that empowerment of those people was missing. And those organizations found it even tougher given the climate. And as a result, we're getting more and more organizations now coming saying, look, we really want to think about how do we do this? We sort of know that coaching is a good thing to do, but where do we start? What does it look like uh, help? And you can see on the slide in front of you all the different types of coaching conversations that can take place right from self-directed coaching right the way through to one-to-one -to -one exec coaching. There's so much to think about. Um, and what we see coaching as is the golden thread that runs through every single conversation. So if you've embedded a coaching culture, it's the way that you do your business. And it's the golden thread that runs through every single type of conversation. Because actually, when it boils down to it, it's simply asking one or two more open and probing questions before potentially then you may want to advise or guide. So when we strip it down, it's doable and achievable within the workplace day to day. Next slide, please, Paula. So we have worked um, significantly with clients over the last uh, 15, 20 years, helping them really think about, well, what's going to work for my organization when I'm thinking about developing a coaching culture? Because what is true is one size doesn't fit all. What's going to work for one organization won't fit for the other. And you can hear that from the two case studies that we've already listened to. So it's thinking about where are we as an organization? Have we already started doing some coaching? Are we quite a far way down in terms of our strategy or are we actually at the starting blocks we're interested but we've not yet started so and everything in between so that's the first thing is where are you at this current point Paula if I can just move to the next slide so what we've done is we've developed what we are calling our coaching culture health check tool and this is a process of working through the five key stages of developing and embedding a coaching culture. And this is based on the years and years of working with organizations across all sectors, all sizes, all environments about what really you need to think through when you're beginning to start on this journey. Because if you really do want to make it stick, you have to think about it strategically. It's not just a case of let's put everybody on a coaching program. Yes, you can do that, but it won't stick because as and when those individuals may leave or transition or the lead person that was organizing that moves on, it then um, starts to flail. So it's about what is the strategy. So the five phases are, to what extent have you got leadership buy-in? And there's a set of questions that we'd pose to you through those. What's your planning for the processes that you're going to bring about? How are you going to get going, get off the starting blocks? Or how are you going to move further? Then how are you going to grow and evolve? And then what about reviewing your impact and evolving your strategy over time? And you can see the Zen and X team have had great fun uh, thinking about how we could do that as part of our photo shoot that I was telling uh, colleagues about earlier. So those are the five key phases of embedding a coaching culture. And our offer to you through this webinar is to provide one hour of consultation, either with myself or one of our coaching culture specialists, to help you understand those five key phases and also then to consider where are you now in terms of your strategy 
and what you might want to go on to do next. So it's a personalized feedback session for your organization based on your results of having completed our health check app. And that's something we're going to be sending out. The conversation is the most important, not necessarily the scores that you get through the tool, but the conversation, because we want to unpick with you what's going on. What have you already tried? What's working? What suits your organization? And then provide some recommendations to you in terms of what you want to do. So that's an hour free consultation. We offer it to all um, clients that we work with. So that's something if you're interested, please um, sign up after this webinar. If you'd like to just have a chat with us, but are not interested in the tool, then please just contact me through the Zenonex website. OK, final slide then, Paula, please. So I just want to talk to you about the next steps now. So following on from this webinar, you will receive a link from City and Guild and that link will have access to our calendar at Zenonex. And if you want to book your one hour free consultation with us, you'll see a link to our Calendly. Find a time to suit you in the calendar and the access to our calendar. Um, it doesn't have to be straight away. If you want to do it in a week, a month, six months, whenever suits you, you book your time. As soon as you've booked your time you'll get an automatic link which gives you access to the app the app takes about 15 minutes to complete no more than that uh, it's really quick uh, for you to do and you will get a pdf report uh, immediately after completing it which just gives you the high level figures that you've run from running the app you'll then wait for your um, feedback session which already will be booked in our diaries and we'll take you through your report in some detail so we'll go underneath the numbers we'll see all the breakdown of all the questions that you've asked and be able to really point and guide you in the right direction in terms of how you take that coaching culture uh, a step further this is the key to future proofing your strategy because if we don't do that upfront thinking and think really careful about it then it will fall and it will only live as long as the person that's championing it that is still there within the organization and this is why we wanted to have and make it stick as part of the overall process Okay, that's all from me. Thank you very much uh, for listening. And I hope to engage with some of you through our tool. Thanks, Paula. Oh, thank you, Susanna. Um, and thanks to everyone. I mean, gosh, that was a real packed hour. And just like listening to, uh, sorry, just reading some of the comments. Um, I think you've blown every, every, everybody out of the water. <laughs> um, I mean, you can see in the chat, you know, every, everybody's feeling really inspired um by by all the inputs actually um so and i think you know there's lots of things to kind of reflect back on um so yeah some some, some really great comments no questions but i think you know there was just so much to pack in there and i think one of the things that we'll be doing like i said to you at the start is obviously sharing the recording so um you can maybe just reflect back on it lots of thanks for you as well susanna um so uh we're almost out of time um i just want to say huge thank you to my speakers um i know that people are in the workplace and they're doing their day job so having time away to come off and do these sorts of sessions i know is is all you know is 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 it has its time constraints so really heartfelt thanks from me um and susanna um just just um a wait for me to kind of send out the links in, in the way that susanna was describing so i'm just reading the chats as, as they're coming through lots of lovely comments so do have a have a read of those um but yeah we're almost out of time thank you so much for joining today and we will be sending some feedback forms as well so it'd be really great to hear your thoughts on how we can do things differently uh, or maybe kind of deeper dive on you know on some very specific themes um and I'll just finally say that somebody's just said this is a great tool for the NHS. So I think for me, that's kind of made my day, actually. Um, all right. Listen, we're going to go for, um, for now. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. And thanks again for joining today's session. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Paula. Thanks, everyone. Bye.